So we got a little bonus footage here. Mike is going to teach us how easy this is. <laughs> All right. So this is the F-150 hood. Uh, tailgate. You can't do it on the on the truck. Uh, best way to do it is to lock it down on this rig. Mm -hmm. You come through these factory holes that are underneath. Uh, when they're this deep, the additional reason is you cannot see what you're doing if you have a bit car. So you've heated the panel a little bit. Does that help the paint? Uh, it helps the durability and pliability of the paint. Mm -hmm. but it's just gonna give me a little bit on the metal. Because these are so deep and driven in from whatever hit it. Mm -hmm. You can see it's a term that we call like volcanoing. Mm where no matter how much pressure you apply in the beginning with a, a rubber tip, the edges are gonna wanna kinda come up before the center does. Oh yeah. Um, so the reason why the light is flooding right now is just to make sure that, you know, I'm keeping an eye on the bottom. Yeah. So. It seems like, the, so tell me what, what is this light again? It's a 3D LED board. It's just reflection based. This is a newer technology? Um, yeah, the LED lights came out, I want to say probably 10 years ago. Um, the boards are getting better now. They're, you can change the temperature and the lighting, you can change the color. So blue, you can get boards with different fades in them. Um, it's really kind of what you like. Do you still, I've seen like guys, they use like a yellow card on the suction cup and stuff. Do you yeah. still do that kind of stuff? Same thing. Um, guys will do that if they're working outside. Mm. Inside you need to have it powered by light. Um, what is that tool? Show me what that tool looks like. This is an ultra straight rig, screwable tip. I've got a rubber cap on it right now. And my main goal is just to get the bottom of the center to budge. Hmm. So that's like a, like kind of like a vinyl, like a little grippy. So it's- It is just for, so you're not doing metal to metal. Yeah. So you're not risking putting any kind of unnecessary poke marks. Anytime you're working on a dent that's this deep that you're not able to actually fill in the bottom of the dent with a light, um, you want to, if you can, use a rubber tip to start. So now it's metal on metal. So the interesting thing a lot of people don't really no, I mean, everybody, every dent guy that'll watch this video knows. But something I try to think about to tell a customer, we're not really looking at anywhere other than the size of about a pen tip and exactly where we want to push. So the edges that are lifting up right now, um, they're in my peripheral vision and I know it's happening, but it's irrelevant at the moment. So I heard you mention earlier you got one shot at this. Yeah, you get about one shot. I mean, you, in all PDR, you really can't. 
Like you yeah. could go too far and then you can't fix the too yeah, far? Yeah, you can crack the paint. Um, uh, okay. Then set it this deep. You can stretch it. Um, these tailgates are pretty notorious for leaving some pretty nasty dents. The metal is incredibly tight. Even the aluminum ones are, I mean, it's all pinion based. They're a little bit easier um, to get the metal to start moving than these older pre-aluminum ones are. You got a layer of sound deadening like concrete behind the dents as well. Um, mm. That makes it a little bit more of a challenge. You can kind of hear it. I don't know if the... Yeah. So, and this was just like a normal, pretty nasty oversized dent, like let's say a door, with the amount of pressure I'm putting, you could probably immediately see the tip of the tool. With this, it is a lot of metal manipulation. Now you have that tape around the hole. What's that all about? So you don't hit the edge? Um, I don't like to scratch stuff. Uh, it's just going to protect I see. the OEM. Just a little bit, you know, something you try to do out of courtesy. Yeah. All of those uh, taps are specific. There's nothing general about what we do. Um, you know, a lot of times people kind of, you know, they get a strike, they get a dent, you know, yeah, it popped right in, but there's nothing about PDR that you get to just pop it right back out unless you're in a clue pole position. So you're massaging the paint back to? Massaging this metal, yeah. direct specific pressure and we stare at about the size of a pen tip so you can actually physically see the tip i can see it yeah through the metal i can that's what the light really helps that's where the technology the new lights really really made a big difference so what are these two puppies costing this dude um well they had about four in here mm -hmm. This has got a little bit of a scratch from what hit it still mm -hmm. right here. There's another one here that's still a little low on purpose. I'll work them all together in uniform. Uh, this was 250. For all for the four dents. For the four of them. All right, and this was based on depth. And then you have the R and I of the lift gate that has to come off. Uh, this one we had to take the parking sensor Mm -hmm. out on the new ones it's a rear view camera similar design they went right through the bed similar clip so those all factors into the cost yeah um you're you're basing that on how much time you think it's going to take it's time we do based on a measurement of inches is our our price scale and then r and i is a different uh r and i we try to go off of book time based on an hourly rate and then ultimately you have to, you know, price accordingly to where the customer wants to get it fixed. Yeah. The alternative is obviously paint and body work. Um, probably be without your car. Not very many uh, body shops would have pulled the tailgate and just let the customer go. And perhaps it would have captured the entire truck. It's a little inconvenient. So I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but you can actually start to see now these two are and were connected in their mm. actual low form. So right now we have a few tiny little bit of push marks that will, uh, will sand out. Mm -hmm. um, still has a little bit of a low running this way in it. And then I'll wait and come back to this one as I get this one a little bit more tight. Hmm. 
Yeah, camera, I can see it. With that light, I can see it <laughs> clear as day. I can probably see it better on camera than I can in person. Yeah, camera does pick it up really well. It's also nice about that diffused light, like it doesn't appear to be like fatiguing. Like it doesn't hurt your eyes like other. Yeah, that, you know, that's a good point. That was actually a big deal for technicians. Um, most, most guys have pretty strong eyes. This actually strengthens your eyesight because it's a muscle. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, from the world that I came from doing hail damage, you know, for a better part of 18 years, we still do it, still fix cars, but you know, it's not uncommon to, not anymore to work on one with a thousand dents on the roof. Jeez. Um, and then you're expected to, you know, sometimes time crunch, you're working with insurance company and or body shop or dealership and guys will work and they'll stay on it for 12 hours straight and your eyes get fatigued at the end of the day. Now when yeah. we were using fluorescence, it was worse. Yeah. That's why I give a lot of credit to the guys that learned on that. I've been doing it, this will be the 21st year. My dad taught me. And uh, I mean, some of the stuff that we had to do it with back then. <laughs> I don't know if, uh, if you would repeat that. Has it become more problematic when you have them on these? On this, on this one it would be, yeah. Not, not on a general rule of thumb, no. Um, depth is the killer, how deep a dent is. Mm. And these were, you know, about as bottomed out as you could get a couple dents. Um, that's, the, that's the problem. That's when it starts to become incredibly challenging. I lost them. Yeah, they're getting pretty close. So my Raptor has one up here. Is right that there, that? huh? Yeah. Now that, yeah, that'll be a problem. Mm. How deep is it? Shallow or? Mm, it's about what, it's about what you have there. So that's an intense amount of heat uh, and a lot of rubber tips. Yeah. You've got to try to drive the metal before you'll actually start to leave a push mark. And you, what you're hoping for is to get the bottom to a manageable place where you're able to finish it off with, you know, very little bit of push marks. You know, with hail, you, you, might, you might go months before you actually need to leave or use the applied pressure that's that hard, even on the worst hail dents. The bottoms are so soft, you can move them without disturbing the texture in the paint mm -hmm. versus uh, the transition of doing, you know, work, side panel work, if that's what you want to call it, or traditional dent repair. You're talking about typically the weight of another vehicle hitting it versus a hailstone might be wind driven. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, it'll deflect board, more than... Deflects more, it doesn't leave such a deep bottom. Yeah. Versus what, you know, this is looking at a little bit different. Actually, if that doesn't give you a good analogy of how hard you have to hit something to dent it, I don't know. I don't <laughs> know what else there is. So now I'm changing my angle from horizontal or some more vertical to a little bit more horizontal. This is just to start to check the way the metal came up. And that changes everything.
Where is it? I can't see it anymore. It's tracking. Hold on a second. We're tracking here still. And here. <clears throat> so we're at about 90, 90%. So now what is important is texture. Um, there's very little microscopic changes in orange peel down at the bottom. However, <clears throat> prior to like sanding, maybe with 2500, which will just nib them out, um, at the same time as I'm simultaneously doing that, I've got to make sure that I'm metal depth corrected. It's not, I'm not too high, I'm not too low as, I, as I'm coming up from this point. Well, if you're not careful, how do you make sure you don't, you'll sand out the, you'll sand out the orange peel and then you'll yep. see it even more, right? No, actually it'll do the exact opposite. So I'm not gonna really hit the orange peel. I'm, I'm gonna leave the little tiny two or three pushes that I want actually high on purpose. I'm gonna leave them up, lift it up. That's gonna ensure that the paper is just hitting that spot. Mm. Um, Are you using a, like a foam backed? It is a uh, toll cut paper. Let's see if I can find it. This is really interesting. I don't even know if the detour world has seen these. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure there are guys that have, but it's a very common. You can feel a piece of this. So you put on your finger and go like that? You do. You can do it. Uh, finger pressure. I've been doing it for so long, I know. Or you can apply it onto this block. Interesting. It's pretty neat. So versus a big giant dry, piece of sandpaper. Dry sand? Dry sand. Most effective way. So you're not losing. I didn't know PDR guys sanded. Well, we have to. Interesting. Not everybody wants to admit to it, but you have to. Sometimes, not every time. Now, what happens if you crack the clear and, I mean, do you, do you go and do you prepare the customer for that possibility? I mean, you do. who's, who's and liable any, then? I mean. We are, absolutely. And our, our, you know, the dent company, if it's myself or Tommy working on them here or, you know, any of the guys that, you know, help me out with hail stuff. If we make a mistake, we crack the paint, you know, that's, that's, that's our You're gonna pay to repaint it? Yeah, absolutely. I would think, I would have thought you would have gone into it and said, look, I mean, this could happen. You know, you, you can take that stance and you, you can you can do that. Um, and there are times when we do. Um, but for something like this, even though these were really deep and really bad, um, you know, again, as long as I've been doing it, you, you kind of know. You kind of know if you're going to or not. Yeah. So, all right, so right now, I'm gonna lose the heat off a little bit. And this will be neat for, that is a detail. So this sanding is for visual, visible or visual. Yeah, my texture changed in my dent due to pressure, due to pushing very microscopically. But, you know, the difference between leaving them and doing this and then going back in, you can actually recreate the orange peel. Mm. We can push if we want to <laughs> and, and make it back the way that it was. Because so, you brought the peel out a little bit. Right, like the pressure the from dent. pushing. Yeah, the pressure from pushing. Changed it down in the bottom. And then you're just going to do a quick this little, little 3,000. 
Um, oh. Initially I am, and then I'm gonna hit it with a, a microfiber perfecting and then a perfecting after so that. That's a little 3M Trizac. Cool. It is, yep, 3000 grit. We need to get you a Rupes Nano, man. I know. That would be nice right now. It's okay. So I don't know what you visually can and can't see with the camera. I can't see squat with my eyeballs, so. <laughs> so before I go to this next step, I'll show you um, how so, important it is to me to finish it perfect and what a little bit of orange peel was left and et cetera. So right here, there's a microscopic bigger chunk of orange peel now to me, mm -hmm. tiny little bit of a flat spot here. There's a tiny little bit of texture, even though it semi matches some of it. Um, I will go in there and push that. And then if you drop your head really far, the one of the four dents, the low is still here. And it really wasn't visible until I fixed these because of how much the metal had driven down the overall area. And I'll fix her a little bit of a scratch that she has from a paint transfer, whatever, hit it. Getting close. Getting close, Matt. So you're pushing up or up and down, but also twisting, right? Is that what I'm seeing your wrist do there? If it is, it's happening subconscious. I'm not even thinking about it. Um, I'm not a, trying to make any kind of twist movement. I don't, it probably looks more like it than it's happening. The tool is in at a slight angle. Mm -hmm. but the pressure is straight up and down. Mm. You, you, you don't want the tool moving on you at, at all. So you can't see from that camera angle, I've got two fingers holding it like that mm. to assure I'm getting no change in direction. This is easy because half the time you're hanging upside down on your back or yeah this one's a little bit easier for that yeah, yeah. and that's why we took it off too I yeah mean, so the alternative to not taking it off is um so you've got to pull this out and then you've got to take her inner plate up here and then you're inside the bed looking working over. through well you're i mean imagine the travel in which the tool is traveling from a further point Mm -hmm. You have less control of that. Um, again, when they're deep, you need leverage. You, you're going to lose leverage on that, in that position. Um, and then you're not going to be able to get flat with it. And I mean flat being that you're with the panel. You're going to be coming from your head being up there and trying to scoop down and around and work at the same time. It's just, you're just not going to get the same result as taking it off. This is it, we're pretty much at the... One more way to look at it. It's gonna change things a little bit too. So a little bit of a low still connecting the two together. And then now we can see the one where she had a little bit of paint uh, transfer.
Looks pretty easy, huh? <laughs> So we still just have a little bit of a low right here. This is another dent that I'll do afterward mm -hmm. um, for her. We'll just finish this last bit right here. All right, so the last thing I'll do, um, so back to talking about sanding again. Typically, um, when a customer has a, you know, a paint transfer or in this case, what these lights are really cool at being able to do versus non-detail uh, lights is you can actually see the scarring in the clear in her case. Picks it up or not. So when you're doing a scar, I found it a little bit more effective to use your finger versus the block. You tighten it up a little bit, the block will try to go and hit. The toll cut being sticky, that mm -hmm. makes a, a big, big difference. It's not really a lot of pressure. And then now we'll get to see what it looks like with the actual marking gone. And if she has any kind of low from it, um, we can go in and push it out. Kind of almost like a factory kind of looking paint defect from her gouge. There we go. Yeah. I certainly can't, I can't see anything with the camera or my eyes. So. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, for a first dent on video. There's a little bit of a low and well, when I'm done correcting it here, you know, I'll be my own worst uh, critic. You know, if I see anything in natural lighting that I think is even like a remote wave, um, I'll stand it up. I'll stand it up and look at it the way it would look on the car. And then, yeah, then you'll have this. This is a separate dent. Yeah, that'll be a separate dent. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. That took what, about an hour to do or so? About an hour, yeah. I think we were filming for about an hour. Yeah. Awesome. You know, and it, I might even spend longer just kind of taking a look at different angles again. Um, so you're, you're based here in Tampa? Uh, Tampa, the dent company. Yeah. We work all together as a partnership with Ryan at Auto Paint Guard, Billy at Presidential Detailing. So if you're anywhere, anywhere around this, come drive here and have them yeah. do it. I'm gonna yeah. bring my Raptor down and hopefully my other cars don't get any dents. Thanks for yeah, sharing, bro. They do. Yeah, Appreciate thank it. you. So what happens when the, when the force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor.